Okay, hi again. Um, this round, I'm going to discuss part B and part C because both actually falls under project work. Alright, uh, for B1, choose one learning unit you want your learners to learn and attach details in uh, sheet 1. If it is possible, you are encouraged to choose a unit where you had designed its curriculum when you did the curriculum learning area for your subject. So, one uh, teaching session uh, to complete. Okay, so one lesson actually. And you can put it here in sheet 1 where we have the learning lesson plan for one teaching session. Uh, you can type the theme or the title, the learner's prior knowledge which you have to uh, know, um, and then the learning outcomes. And here you have three things or four things which you have to do in a lesson. One is set induction. Uh, set induction is where you actually give your students um, the time to to uh, settle down and also sort of like uh, a, a sneak preview of your lesson. So take for example, if you, you are teaching them about vitamins, so you take out um, an orange and then you peel the orange and the whole class will, will smell of orange and one student would ask you, what are you doing? So you can say, I'm uh, going to eat this orange, but what's the benefit of eating orange? Then the students might say, oh, because it contains high vitamin C. So then you have your students uh, there. That means that your students are now ready to learn about vitamins. So then you can go on to the concept and skill development. And over here, we have three columns. One is teaching and learning activity the materials and resources and justification for using the materials and resources. So skill and uh, concept development, you have to keep in mind that you need to incorporate differentiation for the different learning needs. Okay, you have learned about multiple intelligences, so uh, include that in your teaching and learning activity. Um, the other part is assessment. Okay, so you also need to keep in mind uh, the differentiation um, which you need to incorporate into assessment, right? Because uh, each person is a different individual and they can actually show you how or whether they understand in different ways. Some can draw maps, can, some can build. Um, something some can sing some can actually act it out so assessment here is not the summative assessment nor it is formative assessment because most of you will think that since it's formative assessment i'll use quiz i'll use paper and pencil test okay why not you use something else where each multiple intelligence can actually show you whether they understand or is there any misconceptions of the part, uh, sorry, of your lesson? And of, of course, closure. So closure, you can have so many ways. Either um, you ask them to write a summary, um, you discuss the closure with them, and so on and so forth. Okay, so back to the learning log. Um, okay, part B2. So part B is actually identifying learners' learning needs. Okay, uh, from the learning unit chosen, what kinds of learning you want your learners to acquire in terms of content, the concepts, the facts. Uh, then B, what they can do with the content they have learned. For example, uh, they can apply, they can analyze, or they can evaluate, etc, etc, etc. Or C, um, other valued skills, for example, lifelong learning, IT skills, collaboration, teamwork, group work, etc, etc, so on and so forth. So 300 words for this section. B3, why do you value these kinds of learning? Okay, so if you have understood the institutions, your institutions, mission and vision, then 
you can tie it or link it here all right because why do you value these kinds of learning is to achieve the mission and the vision how how do you do that 200 words uh, B4 where are your learners in relation to the kinds of learning you want them to acquire what are their current knowledge skills and pre uh, disposition so here you describe their learning needs where are they because if your students are coming from SPM O levels A levels so where are they compared to where you want them to be or where they're supposed to be um, in the learning outcomes right so what are the learning needs right so what are their current knowledge what are the current skills that they have so all this you need to access uh, before you start your lesson first day of your class B5 how do you know their current knowledge skills and predisposition uh, what evidence have you used to reach this conclusion okay here we're talking about diagnostic tests etc 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 out there and if you google for diagnostic tests there are so many tests that you can use so many ways you can actually um, know their current knowledge their current skills take time to know your learners okay all right part c planning your learning session okay c1 Taking into account B2 and B3 and B4, uh, what teaching approach are you going to use to enable your learners to acquire the kinds of learning that you value? Why do you choose this approach? Okay, uh, there is a bit of confusion between approach and strategies. So I put it here, approach is actually general, strategies is actually more specific. For example, approach might be teacher-centered how or what is the strategy give lecture memorize facts all those things okay so uh, elaborate on this uh, 300 words uh, c2 given the approach you have chosen what teaching strategies or strategy are you going to use why because you need to justify your choice taking into consideration the learning theories the kinds of learning you want your students to acquire where the students are in their learning class size etc etc okay so for this part here um, you have chosen an approach let's say you chose student-centered approach okay so what are the strategies okay uh, for example um, you want them to do group work okay so why why do you want them to do group work so you have to justify your choice here c3 design the learning activities to achieve the kinds of learning you mentioned in b2 so you have to attach this in sheet 2 let's have a look at sheet 2 here so learning activities details and justification so describe in details uh, the learning and teaching and learning activity and the justification for this now you can use as many rows and you can add as many rows as you want Okay, let's go back to learning log c3 uh, design the learning activities to achieve the kinds of learning you mentioned okay so we have this uh, meaning to say that it must be aligned to the learning outcome the lo and it must re reflect the approach that you use here so if it is student-centered learning it must be uh, be reflected here in c3 now c4 if you were to implement C3, what problems do you anticipate? So if you want to implement student-centered learning, for example, okay, you want to do uh, collaboration, group work. So what kind of problems do you anticipate you will be facing? And how, do you, how are you going to deal with them? So, uh, okay, sorry, not take this out. Uh, so you have to think about how you're going to do this. Okay, so that's all from me for this round. See.